Hey drummers, hope you're well. Shout out to superstar channel member Gareth, who's working on uh, this tune and a load of other disco tunes for his band. He's playing in this like function band and it's funk, disco, soul type of stuff. And he was asking about this tune. In fact, this is just on the list with a load of others that he's playing. So this beat will work for this tune, but it'll work for a load of other like disco type of tunes as well. So we're talking disco, dirty, big, drum-driven uh, dance music, absolute classic, pre Cursor, ancestor of, you know, dance music, house music, I guess, as we know it now. And uh, the the big thing here is, actually, I should have said this is played by James Gadsden, funk, soul, disco, I guess, legend of drums, uh, James Gadsden. The big thing here is the bass drum. Four on the floor. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If a producer, musician, anyone asks for four on the floor, that's what you give them. The bass drum going one, two, three, four. It's got the snare drum on two and four, which I would play with the right stick. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's at the heart of the thing, driving it forward. And then it's got a classic disco hi-hat, the old pea soup, pea soup, pea soup uh, type of sound. The James Gadsden version, like the original version, he appears to be playing 16th notes. So hand-to-hand, -hand, like single stroke roll 16th notes, like this. One, two, three, three, four, three, four. And he's opening the hi-hat on the and. So you're getting like this. That kind of feel. Uh, I'll slow that down in a sec. Now you do sometimes see this, or I noticed on a couple of the charts, it's written as like one E and, two E and. Like one E and, two E and, three E and. And that works as well. And I could see why you would write it like that because it kind of sounds like that. Uh, there's somebody's very helpfully put an isolated, I'll link to this actually in the disc video description for this video. Someone's put in like an isolated drum track. They pull the drum track out. And I think there, to my ears anyway, it sounds like he is playing 16th at least most of the time. I think he's just playing, to my ears, a slight emphasis with the right hand as you're playing like one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. He's slightly emphasizing the right hand, so when you're playing. Like, there's not much discernible of the last left, like one E and uh, it kind of slightly disappears into the mix, but I think it is in there, so I would say go with that. The hi hat bit is not, not the least important because it's like the defining thing in disco, but. Whether you play it at 16th or 1E and 2E and, I'd say it's not a huge deal. I would personally play it at 16th. Um, it's worth saying as well that other live versions, drummers are doing slightly different things. It always has the same overall feel. Uh, there's a, a live version I just saw on YouTube with John Robinson playing drums, and he's playing this. He's playing straight eights on the hi hat. He's playing straight eights on the hi hat, open close with like a skip note, one and two and a three and four and one and two and a three and four and, which I thought was kind of cool. It's almost like he's playing the sort of live version of like a house remix, you know. Which is kind of fun. So I think provided you've got that beautiful driving four on the floor, you've got the snare drum on two and four, and you've got some kind of pea soup opening the hi-hat on the and, then you're in business. This is, I think, what James Gadsden is playing more slowly. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, one E and a, two E and a. So again, that the, the left foot, if you're this is if you're right-handed and you're playing conventional right-handed setup, your both your feet will come up together on the ands, because the hi-hat is opening and the bass drum is getting ready to play, and both your feet will come down together on the beat because you're obviously hitting the bass drum and you're closing the hi-hat. Here I'm personally playing. I'm playing the bass drum heel up for a nice big solid you know, thump, people can feel in their chest out in the on the dance floor, but I'm 
playing heel down on the hi hat because I actually think uh, I know I get appreciate I'm playing electronic kit here and it's not quite the same nuance on the hi hat although it's pretty good this one. Uh, what you're what I'm attempting to do here is not open the hi hat like fully, fully. You wrote and this is what how it sounds with James Gadsden's playing as well. He's kind of opening it a bit of the way so you do get that open sound, but it's not like wide open. So. Hope that's helpful. When he gets to a drum fill, it's almost always like 40 and. Here it comes now. One and two and three and 40 and. I'll go one time again, nice and slow. comes for the and one and two and three and four and drum fill two and three and four and so shout out to gareth like i said i hope you find that useful that will work for a load of disco tunes it's a classic groove james gadsden's playing with a beautiful feel that isolated drum track is great check that out um obviously here i'm playing with a sort of regular rock pop you know default kind of drum kit sound like my typical drum kit sound uh on the live versions typically that's what you get is drummers playing with a nice live uh and typically a snare drum that's more tuned up like higher on the original it's quite low in fact on the isolated track it's very low it's a very kind of fat slap on the snare drum kind of wet sound and it almost sounds like it's a snare drum tom tom combination i don't think you'd be playing that live No, I don't think you'd be doing it live. Although some drummers did sometimes do that in the 70s, you know. To kind of fatten up the snare drum, which I, I love. It almost sounds like there's a Tom in the mix. I could be wrong. It might be an overdub. It might just be the way the snare drum's tuned. It might just be the interaction between the kick and the snare. But the, on the original, it's a nice low thump of a snare drum disco style. But on the live versions, it's a much more sort of rock cranked up snare drum sound. So I would go with a in this day and age in particular, I'd go with a, yeah, a kit sound such as this for playing the tune. Hope that's helpful. On the channel members page, as usual, I'll put the James Gadsden version. I'll put that James, uh, the John Robinson version, which is quite fun with the skip note. I'll also put the drum fill as notation and practice along versions and shout out to Gareth and all the amazing channel members who support this channel. If becoming a channel member is of interest, I'll put the details below as well as um, uh, if all the amazing people who support this channel by buying me a coffee. I massively appreciate that. If you found these videos useful or helpful and you wish to support this channel, you can become a channel member for a load of benefits uh, or you can just buy me a coffee, which I hugely appreciate. They're both, both via the same link, which I'll put below. Shout out to Gareth. Thanks for watching as always. See you soon.